Uh, at the outset, uh, can we on this side of the House uh, extend our sincere sympathies to the family of uh, Anne-Marie O'Brien and her daughter Paris uh, following their tragic deaths in the fire in Clondalkin yesterday? We also uh, extend our condolences to the family of Holly and Jordan, the other two children to die in the horrific fire, and we pray that their mother, mother Biddy O'Brien, will fully recover from her injuries. I understand that the Gardaí and the Dublin Fire Brigade are continuing their investigations and I think it will be in everybody's interest that the cause of that fire would be uh, established as soon as possible. Which brings me to my question then, in relation to the Dublin Fire Brigade. The Dublin Fire Brigade uh, provides emergency ambulance services in the Dublin City and County uh, area by arrangement with Dublin City Council and the National Ambulance Service. The Dublin Fire Brigade has a pr proud tradition of providing this fire-based ambulance service in the capital. Uh, international best practice indicates that combining fire uh, rescue and emergency medical service greatly improves the response uh, to a crisis. Uh, 830 Dublin Fire Brigade uh, firefighters are trained paramedics in a position to provide immediate emergency medical assistance and the benefits of this integrated service uh, are, are obvious to everyone. The Chief Executive of Dublin City Council, Owen Keegan, has stated that he wishes to see a, a transfer of all uh, call taking and dispatching uh, for ambulances to the National Central Control Centre in Tala. Uh, he has also stated that this is, the, uh, uh, this is the view of the Chief Executives of the other local authorities, even though it's not agreed by uh, the councillors in those local authorities. The HICWA report certainly uh, raised concerns uh, in relation to the operating of two ambulance services in the Dublin area and called for enhanced integration of service provision. It is clear, therefore, that coordination and integration uh, between the Dublin Fire Brigade and the National Ambulance Service is required. Uh, it is a fact that uh, significant investment uh, is also needed uh, in, the, uh, ambulance, in the Fire Brigade and Ambulance capacity uh, in the Dublin area. Investment is needed in ambulance, uh, personnel, vehicles and technology. Uh, last Saturday, uh, rallies took place. I'm coming to my question, Ken Corla. Uh, last Saturday, rallies took place in all the uh, uh, Fire Brigade uh, centres throughout Dublin. Uh, which uh, demonstrated the uh, support uh, for uh, the, uh, the, the retention of the ambulance service by the Dublin Fire Brigade. Uh, a strike action has been uh, called off by Impact and uh, SIP2 following the intervention of, of Kieran uh, Mulvey. So, uh, my questions to you then, uh, uh, Minister, uh, is um, do, you, do, do you agree uh, that the uh, ambulance uh, service uh, should be retained in Dublin City Council? Uh, the uh, expert uh, panel. Uh, uh, published its report in, in 2015 and made recommendations for the future of the ambulance service. And I think that provides a mechanism for, uh, 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 for uh, uh, co coordination, as I say, and also governance. And I hope, uh, Minister Antonish, the, that the relevant ministers will deal with this issue once and for all. It's been dragging on for too long and we need action in this regard. Thank you, Deputy. Tarnish, then. Well, the first thing I want to say, Deputy, and I want to join with you in extending my sympathies uh, to the families of those who have the young children and the mum and, of course, her friend who is seriously ill. Uh, I was so saddened to hear about the tragic fire uh, in uh, Clondalkin and the circumstances uh, surrounding that fire. My thoughts uh, at this stage are with all of those involved, uh, their relatives and friends. And I'm sure we speak for everyone in this house when I extend our sympathy uh, to all of the families. I spent time there this morning uh, meeting with the Gardaí, of course, who are investigating and the further forensic analysis is being done. Uh, I met with the the staff of SONUS who have been providing services for 25 years uh, to women in vulnerable situations and they are devastated, absolutely devastated uh, by uh, what has happened. Uh, clearly they are offering every support they can to the other families who thankfully escaped that uh, fire. Um, I also want to pay tribute to the emergency services um, who arrived very quickly at the scene of the fire, but clearly we will wait now uh, the results of the various forensic and guard investigations, but clearly our thoughts today are with the relatives and friends of those who so tragically uh, lost their lives. Deputy, in relation to the uh, question 
uh, which you've raised. Uh, the Department of Housing, Planning, Community and Local Government were informed by the Dubli Dublin City Manager that SIP2 served notice on Dublin City Council on the uh, 6th of May in relation to uh, potential stoppages. My information is that uh, the departments have been heavily involved, uh, clearly do not want to see this uh, going ahead. In terms of fire safety and the provision of fire services, the Department is primarily concerned with ensuring that local authorities are meeting their obligations in respect of their statutory fire service and fire safety responsibilities. And the provision of health services in Ireland, including the provision of ambulance services, is of course the responsibility of the HSE operating under the remit of the Department of Health. So we have a number of departments involved. Um, clearly, uh, we want to make sure that any discussion on Dublin Fire Brigade and the ambulance services uh, focuses on addressing the, the report, the report uh, issues. Um, obviously, uh, we have to respect the excellent and proud tradition of Dublin Fire Brigade. And, um, the Minister for Health, uh, Minister Harris and Minister Coveney uh, are looking at the recommendations. Uh, what's critical is that there is no reduction in frontline ambulance services. And there is certainly no intention uh, that that should be the case. Thank you very much. Uh, the expert panel on pre-hospital emergency care services Dublin published its report in 2015. Does the Tarnista agree that the findings of the expert panel should now be implemented as a matter of urgency as this report provides a mechanism to address the operational inefficiencies and the issue of a fully integrated ambulance service in Dublin? Will the two relevant ministers commence immediately by way of new governance arrangements set out by the expert panel a process to eliminate the shortfall in the Dublin fire brigade available capacity to meet uh, demand in order uh, that the use of fire appliances to respond to ambulance calls is reserved for those calls that are clinically uh, appropriate. Um, can funding be provided directly uh, by the Department and Dublin City Council for the operation of the ambulance service provided by the Dublin Fire Brigade and can this funding be increased to reflect the current costs of the service? Tarnish, the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nobody really has any capacity in the HSE to take over the ambulance service currently administered by the Dublin Fire Brigade. So really, could, you, could, you, could the government and the two relevant ministers intervene in this matter, sort it out and leave the Dublin Fire Brigade continue to do what, it's already, what it has done over the last uh, over 100 years ago, ago? Thank you very much, Deputy. Tarnished it. The first point I'd want to make, uh, Deputy, is that we are investing more in the National Ambulance Service. Uh, that's the first key point. Uh, I quite agree with you that we don't want to lose any of the excellence and the experience uh, that has been built up over the years. Um, we have a series of recommendations which will be discussed and considered by both ministers, and the funding considerations uh, will be part of those discussions. So this issue is uh, clearly one that has been taken very seriously by both ministers, by both departments. Each of them have responsibilities uh, in relation to it. And funding uh, is continuing. There will be no reduction in frontline uh, ambulance services. That's critical given the demands on our hospitals. And yesterday it was made clear in the House uh, that engagement will take place uh, when the recommendations uh, come to the ministers.